So the format of the gong show uh, is the following. The idea is that I'm going to have the slides that you kindly sent uh, the other day. We have compiled them in, a, in one PDF, so I'm going to be changing the slides on my site. So every time you need to change slide, you're just going to be talking, then you say slide, and I change. The idea is that the gong show is the fast-paced part of the event. It's going to be only five minutes, and you need to uh, explain everything you want in those five, min those five minutes. Once the time is up, I'm going to uh, um, say gong something. I'm going to tell you that your time is up, and then I'm going to pass to the next person. So uh, as I said, the order, and as we told you in the previous mail, is first Maximiliano, then Rodrigo, then Marcelo, then Juan Ramos, then Francisco, then Matias, and then Luis Fernando. So, uh, given that the first one is Max, uh, Max, are you there? You did? Maximiliano. Max, are you I there? I think you're muted, Maxi. Okay, okay. Go <laughs> on. <laughs> Perfect, you're there. All right, so everybody get ready because once it's your turn, you need to start right away. All right. Perfect. <clears throat> so let me check that I do that. <clears throat> uh, full screen. All right. So I'm going to start counting time. So Max, get ready. Three, two, one, go. Hi, everyone. My name is Maximiliano Ferro. I am a PhD student in Instituto de Física La Plata. This work is in collaboration with my advisor, Diego Correa, and Victor Giraldo Rivera. I will talk about correlators on ABJM line defect from a string worksheet on ADS4 times CP3 and the role of the Carl Ramon field. Next slide. The ABJM model is a three-dimensional superconformal field theory. Precisely, it is a n equal six super chain Simon gauge theory with matter, which gauge group is UN times UM. The main motivation for this model is the low energy description of n two brains in a singularity, and at large n, this model is dual to n theory in this fixed background. In certain limit is accessible a type 2a string theory description and the geometry collapsed to ADS4 times CP3. For different rank of gauge group, we need to include a no vanishing carbon field around a cycle uh, CP1 into the CP3 geometry. This field coupled with the edges of the open string and induced a certain uh, boundary term for the fluctuation in the worksheet. Slide. Uh, let's talk about Wilson lines as one-dimensional defect CST. In general, a Wilson line is a non-local operator defined along an open curve. In general, a D-dimensional CFT, a strain Wilson line partially breaks the conformal group into a small one, which contains the one-dimensional uh, conformal group time their rotation around the defect. For the superconformal field theories, there are some special operators with an unbroken supersymmetric group. For example, the one over six BPS Wilson line in ABJM, which is the case uh, uh, under STI, given by this super connection, which can uh, preserve four of the total supercharges of the theory. Slide. Slide. Uh, in this uh, line, we can calculate correlators of operators along the line as one dimensional CFT. And in general, the endpoint functions are constrained by the uh, conformal structure. For example, the four point functions is given by a cross ratio function times a global factor, depend on the uh, point of uh, operator insertions and the weight of the uh, uh, operators. Slide. In ADS CFT, we can calculate the expectation values of Wilson lines as the minimum area of open string worksheet taking boundary condition uh, given by the Wilson line. Uh, for the strain line case, the dual worksheet geometry is precisely, uh, precisely uh, the ADS2 geometry uh, provides an example of low-dimensional ADS-CFT correspondence. 
for the string worksheet, the degrees of freedom are six massless scalar correspond with the CP3 directions and two massive complex scalar associated with the ADS4 uh, direction plus the fermionics degrees of freedom. Next. That's right. Um, in in ADS CFT, we can associate the uh, operator along the line uh, with fluctuations uh, on the worksheet. Uh, and we can calculate the generating function of the CFT as the uh, partition function uh, of the gravitational theory, where the boundary conditions are associated with the uh, current of the um, the generating function of the, uh, the of the CFT. Um, well, uh, uh, we need a study uh, fluctuations uh, uh, in particular uh, uh, scalar field theories in the worksheet and near the boundary. In general, uh, we have this behavior, and we need to choose a, a certain uh, boundary condition. For example, we can choose a mixed boundary condition. Uh, compatible with the supersymmetry and the conformal symmetry. This kind of um, mixed boundary condition are naturally induced by the Carramon field uh, coupled with the edges of the open string in the CP1 uh, geometry. Uh, slide. Uh, we study uh, the problem of fluctuations around the uh, CP1 directions um, and calculate the green function for this problem with this special boundary condition. Uh, finally, uh, next. Go, go, uh, go, 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 go. Time's up, time's up, time's up. <laughs> next one is uh, Rodrigo Gonzalez. So, Rodrigo, get ready. Open your microphone. Tell me when yes. you're ready to go. All right, so get ready. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm going to briefly talk about these two papers we recently published uh, that are basically how to re constrain reheating, uh, how to constrain inflation with reheating. Uh, gone. Uh, next. Sorry. Okay. So for an example, I will use the Starobinsky model for inflation, which is the equation number one. Here I presented the, the model in its so-called Einstein frame version, which uh, possesses a Lagrangian for uh, the scalar field. Uh, but the original Starobinsky model contains an, uh, an R-squared term, which is uh, motivated by quantum corrections to gravitational einstein hilbert dash. Then uh, I will be using the so-called slow roll approximation to study inflation, which is uh, parametrized by these so-called slow roll parameters in equation two, epsilon, uh, eta, and further slow roll parameters, which relates the potential of the scalar field to the, its derivatives. Uh, inflation is possible to happen whenever these uh, slow roll parameters are small. And in equation three, I, I am showing the relations between these slow roll parameters and the observables, which are the power spectrum of the scalar perturbations, AS, and the, some of the inflationary observables, such as the tensor to scalar ratio, R, and the uh, spectral index, NS, and the running of this spectral index. Next. Uh, now, the procedure is as follows. We want to find uh, a closed form between the field, the inflaton field, the, the scalar field phi, uh, using the previously mentioned inflationary equations. So in order to do this, we first solve the equation for the spectral index, for the tensor to scalar ratio, sorry, uh, finding a form depending on uh, relating phi and this uh, observable in four. Then if we plug in this equation, into the relation uh, for the spectral index, we find the first consistency relation of the model, which relates NS and R. Uh, therefore, if we were to measure whatever of these, these variables, we will immediately uh, know what is the value of the other one. Uh, then we continue this procedure in order to find the relation between the running of the spectral index and the tensor to scalar ratio. And lastly, the number of EFOs, which is the, the equation select. Notice that the number of EFOLs contains the, the field evaluated at the end of inflation, which can be done just by setting epsilon equal one. This is the so-called end of the slow roll limit. And this is a number. So uh, in NK, uh, we, we already have 
the number of efforts related to only observable quantities. Next. Then we want to connect this with the reheating epoch. This is done by equation eight, which is a connection to reheating. This is uh, very. This is a very uh, involved equation. But the only thing you will you need to know is that this equation relates the number of people of reheating, the equation of state for reheating, W R E, uh, many many constants, and the potential at the end of inflation, which is the rho E. Then, uh, as we need to eliminate this number of if this uh, reheating number of vehicles from equation eight, we consider another, let's say, time measure from the time a mode of uh, a mode k exited the horizon during inflation to the time this mode re-entered uh, the horizon during radiation domination. Uh, this is the equation number nine. And then, if we uh, relate these two, we find an expression for the equation of state parameter relating it to only measurable quantities such as the number the number of people of inflation and I say measurable because uh, as we find found in the in the previous slide these were related to only observable quantities next and finally uh, what we do is plot the um, equation of state parameter of reheating versus the uh, spectral index finding out that there are many possibilities for the for the equation of state parameter but if we restrict ourselves uh, to certain values of this uh, equation of state parameter, we therefore find a, a constraint on the on the spectral index, as I show in the second plot. And with this, and as every other of our other quantities are related to NS, we can therefore simply plug in the new bounds on, on NS in order to find new bounds on any other of the observables and cosmological quantities. Next. And these are the bounds. Um, uh, bounding omega from 0 to 0, uh, 0.25, we then bound ns, and then bound r, and then bound uh, every other quantities. And this is a way to constrain inflationary models from the heating. And I think it's the five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Just in time. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next one is Marcelo. Marcelo, you there? Okay, thank you. Could, could you hear me? Yes, yes, perfectly. All right, okay. so get ready to start in three, two, yes. one, go. Okay, thank you very much to the organizers for, for this opportunity. I, I will talk about an holographic per perspective of a uh, one plus one confining field theory. This work is based on this um, article, which is an archive with Carlos Nunez and Ricardo Stuart. Next, please. Okay, some motivation to study this kind of, of approach is uh, use holography to, to, to study a strongly coupled system from the point of view of gravity, uh, where the, the coupling uh, in the gravity side is small when the in the dual theory is uh, big. So, uh, for example, QCD is a theory for SU3 and for a gauge theory for SU3 with fermions, which is strongly coupled below the lambda QCD. Next, please. Okay, so the idea is study a background in type 2B, and uh, in this talk, I will concentrate in the in the first line of the Lagrangian, just the Dilaton, the metric, the H3, and the F3 uh, Ramon field. Okay, and uh, also the quantization condition uh, in the last equation will allow us to know how many brains we have in the configuration. Okay, next, please. Uh, okay, how we will construct the background? The idea is consider the the, the Neveshwar sector in 10 dimensions and reduce it to four dimensions in S3 cross S3 plus a half supersymmetry breaking condition in order to land in N equal four SU2 cross SU2 gauge to gravity, which is also known as the friedman schwarz theory. Okay, and um, here in this theory with uh, Fabrizio Camfora and Julio Oliva, we find a solution um, with the metric, the dilaton, and the and the two gauge fields turn on, but the 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 a field equal to zero. Next, please. Slides. Okay. That, thank you. Um. Okay. This is the solution. This is the solution. It 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 is a Lorentzian manifold with a compact coordinate with um and the radius of of this s one shrinks to zero when r goes to the first zero of the function f okay so phi is 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 p 
periodic and the period is fixed in order to have a regular solution at r equal to r plus and this feature uh, we will be shared with the 10 dimensional uh, manifold okay next please and lifting the solution we will obtain something in the neve schwartz sector okay and uh, we have the h3 the dilaton and the metric in 10 dimensions in a string frame and you can see that this background is um, when r goes to infinity the the string coupling is small so this this background is good in in in, in that region okay and uh, the the um, this corresponds to two ns5 brain uh, ns5 uh, intersecting ns5 in the coordinate tx and bar 5 okay next please and as dualized in this background we will obtain something with a ramon ramon field turn on which is the f3 and uh, you can see that uh, uh, this background has a, a vibration which is proportional to qa and qv and now we have two stacks of d5 brains uh, intersecting in these coordinates next please so the some features of this background is that it is bbs when uh, m is equal to zero and there is a relation between the constant and uh, but the, the the string coupling grows at infinity so in that case it's better as dualize and study the, the the this little string system okay next please and uh, what about the the, the dual uh, field theory uh, the idea is that in the intersection and in the limit when r go to to R plus, the theory is effectively one plus one because the, the, the radius of, of phi goes to zero. And if we study the Young Mills coupling in this background, considering this uh, brain proof, we find that the Young Mills coupling is uh, uh, big when R goes to R plus. So this is a good description of this model. Next, please. Some observables that we computed is that the, 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 the Maldacena Wilson loop, which uh, is interpreted as a, a brain at infinity with the endpoints are quark and anti quark. And if we study the energy of this uh, configuration in a, as a function of L, it grows linearly with the energy. So this is a, a, a signal of confinement. Next, please. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, we study the entanglement entropy. And in this case, it was uh, uh, proposed that the, 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 the Phase transition in entanglement entropy is related to uh, a, a confinement, but it, this is true for non-local UV completion. So this is not the case. And if we put a cut off, we recover this Okay, thank you. Almost finished. <laughs> Almost. Thank you. Gong. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. 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 Yeah. If you are meet. Yeah, okay. perfect. All right. Are you ready, Juan? Um, I so to begin in three, two, one, go. Uh, today I will talk about this topic based on uh, this work uh, done in collaboration with the lab in, in the regular. Slide, please. By the way, first, uh, thank you for the organizers. Um, so in this talk, I will discuss a concrete example of ABS 3 cf 2 correspondence slide. Uh, the object that uh, we are interested in is in the one-point correlation function of a primary field phi uh, on, uh, of uh, w, W's 3 CFT. This object is given here is basically a trace uh, over some Hilbert space. The point is that this function is described, uh, it's given by a function that we call conformal block that I will describe later. To worry about W3 CFT is that it, the symmetry is generated by the stress and inner tensor in equation two and uh, additional current uh, WN. And the, the low remote uh, satisfy the, the uh, W3 algebra. As you can see, there is a C, which is the central chart. And uh, slide, please. So, uh, uh, so we are interested in the large transversal limit. And this limit, the, this algebra reduced to the SO3 algebra. So uh, generated by, by eight generators. And we are interested again, computing a uh, phi, which is the conformal block. It's a trace over of the primary field over this uh, state uh, 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 where you see that uh, below equation six, this state are descending state at level N. Uh, 
So, uh, for example, a uh, concrete, uh, a very good example of this uh, of this function uh, phi is when you have the primary field is the identity. In this case, this f reduced to the character w three character given by equation the first equation six, a and this equation is very important because tell you that for, that for example in the level zero in the equation seven. You have in equation uh, six, you have one le one state, and in level two, in level one, you have two state, uh, first line of the equation uh, six, and level two, you, you have five state. These five state are those of equation uh, seven, like described by the action of this uh, uh, mode. Uh, they are five. Uh, slide, please. So we computed this uh, conformal block up to uh, the second level. There is no, uh, there is not non-expression closed for expression in general. Uh, so we compute this for uh, in the large central limit. Also, we conjecture the equation nine. And uh, so, uh, uh, slide please. So and then also we provide the the, the holographic description of this conformal block. Here I need to mention that in general. We have the Charles Simons, uh, uh, which describe uh, the Einstein action. Uh, but here, in our case, the connection A in, of equation 11, it's a one for value in the gauge algebra SL3. We define this uh, important Wilson line operators. Uh, it's basically exponent of um, uh, a path of, of uh, integral over a path from point X to, po uh, to point uh, Y. Let me schematically represent this Wilson line as is drawn in, in this figure, like a line from X to Y. Uh, so uh, the holographic description that we provide and we check is in the following slide. Slide, please. So we the claim is that the the, well, the conformal block, uh, uh, the Rahan side F, the function F, uh, the, the SL3 in the SL3 sub model. This function is given by this expression, uh, which uh, in the left hand side, which contain, as you can see, three, uh, the product of, okay, it's not a product, but it contains three uh, Wilson line operator. Uh, one coming from uh, the blue one is, is from one point from the bulk, uh, the other, the green one from this point to other point X. And we project these two Wilson line uh, into a third one. And then we join X and Y. And we take the trace and the claim that this reproduces the function f. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's our result. Uh, next slide, please. So that's our result, and uh, and thank you. All right, before time, perfect. Gong, and next we have uh, Francisco Reyes. No, Francisco can you hear me? You there? Yes. Okay. All right, so to begin in three, two, oh, one, go. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. My name is Francisco Reyes, and my presentation is titled uh, One Oversee the Formations of ADS3 Boundary Conditions, uh, a work carried out in collaboration with Christian Senlara and Miguel Pino. In this brief presentation, I will show you how, uh, by choosing suitable boundary conditions uh, for the gravitational field, it is possible to find an equivalence between the Einstein equations and a family of integral equations known as the Haridim hierarchy. Next uh, slide, please. Oof. Mm. Uh, from a holographic perspective, general relativity in two plus one dimension has been a useful scenario uh, for studying uh, boundary conditions of the gravitational field. Uh, in particular, for the case of ADS3, uh, the theory is trivial from the bulk point of view, since uh, every solution is locally ADS, and therefore the theory does not propagate degrees of freedom, such as uh, gravitational waves. Despite of this, uh, the theory admits uh, black hole solutions, uh, such as the BDZ black hole. On the other, on the other hand, our preliminary uh, work on holography, G.D. Uh, G. Brown and Mark Hino show that the, the theory exhibits two copies of the Virasoro algebra as generators of asymptotic symmetries with a, with a possible uh, central extension known as the brown Geno central charge. And furthermore, Cousert, Geno, and Mandrill um, uh, show that uh, by choosing the suitable, uh, suitable boundary conditions, the theory exhibits uh, asymptotic degrees of freedom. 
Um, the choice of suitable boundary conditions is important because it allows us uh, to define asymptotic symmetries, which are gauge transformations uh, that preserve the form of the, the boundary conditions. And um, uh, there are two types of them, uh, those that change the physical state of the system and those that do not. And additionally, the boundary, um, the boundary conditions must make the action finite and uh, undifferentiable so that the action principle is well defined. And they must also admit solutions of physical interest, such as black holes. And let me review some aspects uh, of the theory. Uh, the action of ADS3 uh, gravity can be written as two copies of the chern simons action, uh, where the gauge fields A are spanned in terms of two copies of, of the SL2R algebra. And um, as you can say there, and you can see there, uh, uh, the Einstein equations in the formulation in these formulations are equivalent to a zero curvature equation given as follows. And uh, the boundary term B uh, must be supplemented to the churn simons action so that the variation of the Hamiltonian action vanishes on shell. And therefore, it is important to specify the behavior of the fields at the boundary. Next slide, please. Um, okay. Before to do this, um, we will choose the fields as follows uh, in the first line, uh, <clears throat> where A and Matkal A are uh, related by uh, a gauge transformation, uh, such that the radial dependence is captured by the gauge parameter B. And we are interested in studying uh, spaces that, asymptotically, that, that are asymptotically ADS, uh, which from the Charles Simon's point of view is given by uh, the following choice for A sub phi. And uh, the, the most general choice of the Lagrange multiplier uh, in the temporal component uh, that preserves the condition above is given uh, for A sub t, where mu are functions that must be specified and depend on t and phi. And our goal then is to exploit this freedom uh, by proposing a choice of for mu such that allows us to construct a new family of boundary conditions. To do this, uh, we consider mu as a finite expansion in negative powers of the central charge as, as follows, as you can see, uh, where the value of n must be chosen. And by introducing, uh, <laughs> if, you can, if you can see it, um, uh, introducing uh, this, uh, this, answer, this polynomial answers into the boundary equation of motion and solving order by order in C, uh, we find the following relations uh, where the first equation corresponds to a dynamical equation. Um, uh, the following ones are conditions that allows us to construct each term. And by performing this recursive exercise, we obtain a remarkable result. Uh, for each value of n, uh, we obtain a partial differential equation that is uh, an integral, an integral system belonging to the higher Harry Dim hierarchy. Gone, 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 gone. Time's out. Okay. Uh, next one, we have Matias and Pen. Matias, you here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. All right. So if you can see the slides, then Matias, you begin in three, two, one, go. Yeah, in this talk, I will talk about uh, a little bit of holography in the sitter. This is the work that we are currently doing with uh, Guillermo Silla, my advisor, um, Alan Fugelman. Next slide. So this is a big picture of holography right now. Like you have uh, for ADS, we know a lot of stuff. Like we know how to embed in the string theory, we know the sugar limit. We know exactly how to do the computations. For a uh, flat space, we are currently uh, advancing in these topics, doing the celestial holography and like an alto kind of things, like celestial strings and all that. But when we go to the sitter, we don't know actually. There are, we have uh, two pictures, like we can do it in a global picture, like in the global coordinates, or we can do it in a static patch. Static patch is something like what Witten is doing, that kind of stuff for information theory. So we will talk about, about uh, a little bit about group theory and how to do this. A slide. So for the ones that do doesn't know much about the sitter, the sitter is, is taking the Mikoski in one more dimension, um, putting a surface 
um, putting the embedding coordinates and you will get the sitter that is the last equation below uh, everything. The slide. So <clears throat> what is a representation? A representation is a, it's a, you get a field that is an initial value of the Casimir and the cartons. When you get this, you get a representation and you can move around, you can move into representation. Uh, the, the way to think about it, uh, how to compare it with something we know, we can think about SU2 and we uh, how we can move the azimuthal number, but we cannot move the J number. Yeah, this is quite similar. So in the sitter, we have three, th three types of representations. Uh, we have to ask to, for unitarity and irreducible to have these uh, three types, otherwise we have more. So in the principal series, is a, is a way uh, to have a lowest or highest, uh, it was a way is weight operator, not both. In the complementary series, it's the same. We have a lowest or highest, but not both. But in the discrete series, we have uh, both. We have a lowest weight and a highest weight. This implies that uh, when we go to the non-compact group, that will leave, for example, SO 1,3 or SO 1,4, we cannot connect the two, the two representations. So, so this means that we will get, if we get a one Hilbert, a one particle Hilbert space from one of one of one or the other, we cannot go to the other one. A uh, slide. Yeah. So uh, our little war pony, uh, this is the way to think about the, the, the easiest example is that if you take the Cedar 2, and you start uh, doing the computations, you will see a solution of the form uh, of the form that is a, a right moving and left moving in the circle that represent the S1. But we cannot, if we ask this to be M, M, A, uh, mass equals zero, we get a gauge symmetry that is the, the shift symmetry in the phi, in the phi. And this makes it so that we cannot go from the a positive azimuthal number to the negative azimuthal number, number in the full decider to the full decider to the Hilbert space slide. So we are doing right now is generalizing this to the AMU. If we if we do this to the AMU, we get a, what is a, in the bottom of this. That is how to split it in SO four representations, and you have to embed this in the SO four comma one representation. So we are trying to see the discrete series in this example slide. So uh, we can see the interplay between SO4 and SO4,1 and all the ladders from SO4 are how to represent it in SO4,1. And we are currently trying to study the action of the conformal killings in SO4 representations that comes from the Lie derivatives. Um, we expect to uh, generalize this to the uh, Rarita Schwinger case. And there are some references there if you want to read more. Thank you. Right, Gong. And I think this is the last one. It's Luis, uh, Luis Fernando. Oh, Luis, hi. are you here? Yeah, you can hear me. Yeah, Hello. Perfect. So you begin in three, two, one, go. Okay, thanks again for the opportunity. I will be talking today about log numbers for rotating black holes in higher dimensions. This is a work I have been developing with my advisor, Maria Rodriguez, Lucas Antonio, and Adam Solomon. Slide. So to get a general picture, uh, for instance, from a Newtonian gravity perspective, let's have in mind an object, an astrophysical object that generates a gravitational potential as background and that it interacts with some other external source that will generate a perturbation of it. By that interaction, we expect to have a tidal response from it. And then the full pot gravitational potential in spacetime will be described by the superposition of these three contributions. Now, uh, the idea that we have a tidal response then leads us to think that the object, the original object, should be under some sort of deformation. And that this deformation can be described by a response coefficient that in general will be a complex expression from which the real part will be what we call the so-called love number that will characterize the rigidity of the object. Next. 
So in particular, uh, we can uh, in general analyze uh, this whole concept from a gravitational perspective, but to get a qualitative view of these phenomena, we can uh, consider the perturbation to be a massless scalar field. And for instance, let's take the case of a Kerr black hole solution. And in order to determine the response coefficient, we what we need to do is to solve the Klein-Gordon equation for this scalar perturbation. And using the ansatz on the second expression on the slide, we shall be able to uh, not only solve the Klein-Gordon equation, but separate it in uh, the radial and angular sector. Uh, the radial sector in particular will be a hypergeometric equation that we can actually solve analytically. And from that, and by considering that the solution that we care about shall be smooth at the horizon at that infinity, we are able to recover the response coefficient, the scalar response coefficient given by lambda here at the end of the slide. Now, as we can see, this coefficient depends not only on the parameters of the black hole, like the spin parameter of Kerr A, or the outer and inner horizon radiuses, R plus and R minus, but also on the angular modes L and M that come from the separation constant on the angular sector of the equation. And what we're going to see is that, uh, in principle, these L modes shall be uh, integer uh, natural numbers, and when those are integer, these uh, well, when those values are natural in general, this, uh, the real part of the response coefficient will vanish. So what we will have is that the log number actually vanishes. The dissipative part will not uh, vanish, but we don't care about that at this moment. And a similar behavior we are going to find in Schwarzschild and other four-dimensional cases. Slide. So the natural question is what we would expect in five dimensions where we have non-trivial topologies, not only the spherical one, but in the case of black rings and black strings, for instance. And that's what we care about in this project. Slide. So, for instance, the first example that we anal that we went through was the Myers-Perry black hole solution in five dimensions. We can picture this as a generalized care black hole solution. Instead of having one spin parameter, it will have two, A and B. How and we'll have five regular singularities where two pair of them will be uh, degenerate. However, even with that, we can actually solve this equation in the static limit, the Klein-Gordon equation, I mean and in particular focus on the radial sector that we care about in like the previous case. And by making a proper coordinate transformation and a field redefinition, we are able to solve this equation again as a hypergeometric one and recover the scalar response coefficient that we have by the end that depends on the black hole parameters and the angular modes I mentioned before. And as we can see in general, it's a running uh, coefficient. And the important part is that when L hat is an integer, what we are going to see is that this uh, response coefficient, in particular the real part, the log number part, is non-vanishing compared to the Kerr black hole. Not only that, if we fix to zero both the spin parameters, we will reduce to the Schwarzschild and the case in five dimensions. Uh, that will coincide indeed with the expressions already known in the, letter, in the literature, and this will vanish actually for any integer value of L, capital L hat. Next. So another example that we have is the black ring solution, in particular, the single spinning black ring case. However, we can perform a similar analysis. In here, the five uh, singularities that we will find, even though will be regular, will not be degenerate. So in order to solve the radial sector of the equation, it's a little bit more involved. And we will require a certain approximation that will be, in this case, the thin ring approximation when the radius of the horizon are not uh, divided by capital R being the capital R, the radius of the ring will be much smaller than one. If we have the equation, yes, I'm so sorry, sorry. I know everybody in the gong show hates me, but that's how it works. All right, so that's it. Finally, gong show. Let me stop sharing the screen. Perfect. All right. Thank you very much for everyone who participated in the gong show. That's always very fun.